Witchcraft, Voodoo, or the Occult? We ask people who have practiced or witnessed these acts, what was the strangest, most unexplainable thing you've ever saw? In fact, Midnight Monster has 10 stories for you today. Let's dive into story one, shall we? I was the victim of a bear walker. In First Nations culture, a bear walker is someone who uses our sacred medicines for bad and not good. They can make someone very sick. Only a medicine man may reverse it, and it often comes as a gamble for the bear walker. Once reversed, they will suffer more than the one they made sick. I was 20 years old and very healthy. One night, I had a dream I was in a field and I was picking wildflowers. From each direction, a tornado was coming at me. I woke up in a fevered sweat. That began two months of sheer misery. My doctor kept saying that I had a UTI. She would give me antibiotics and I would subside for a while. I lost 40 pounds in those two months. By the end of it, I couldn't even walk. Barely ate. Finally, my mom got tired of it. My sister bundled me up and we went out to the hospital. Though an earlier ultrasound showed nothing, there was a huge growth on my ovaries. A few days later, I had surgery and when the doctor came to visit me, he said he has not seen anything like it. It was a yellow, almost concrete-like substance around my ovary. I got better, but my mother remained unconvinced and scheduled an appointment with a medicine man. We gave him tobacco and he smoked a pipe and sang a song. He said something along the lines of, A woman sing me at powwow. She became interested in who I was because of my mother. She threw a piece of medicine in my path. I stepped on it and it went up my right leg. He asked me if I still felt it. I said yes. He took a bone, what kind, I'm not sure, placed it in the area and began to suck. Weird, I know. He started vomiting yellow, vomiting yellow. Like the doctor said, he gave me medicines and rituals for my mom to do. I went home that night and slept for 13 hours. My sickness never returned. My sister was and is really into occult, Wiccan, and witchcraft kind of stuff. I think she meant to be a Wiccan, but a 13-year-old isn't incredibly discerning. Around the time she got into it, our house started to get incredibly creepy. We would see things move out of the corner of our eyes. Nobody wanted to be home alone. Nobody wanted to be in the living room at night. At first, we could blame it on the house and the land. Then we moved, not just houses, but continents. The weird stuff followed. All of it was always centered around my sister and her room, and it was always aggravated when we did serious cleaning, especially when we moved. The height of it was when we were moving back to the United States. We had two different flight groups. My mom and my sister left six weeks before the rest of us to pick up the new house, while my dad, brother, and I cleaned and packed the old home. We heard thumping from my sister's room. The windows and doors would open and close on their own, not possible from just the wind, and shadows would move wildly underneath the door pretty much every night, even with the blinds closed. I'm not sensitive or discerning of that kind of stuff, but it was plain as day, even to me. It was only after my sister finally moved out of our next house and we cleaned out her room that it all ended. Whatever it was, it was tied to my sister in any sort of disorder or uncleanliness. The weird thing about spirits and energy is that the more you look for it and try to connect to it, the more likely you are to develop the form of sixth sense that kind of lets you feel the presence of them, especially if you know how to tune your senses and meditate. I've always been spiritually sensitive and I learn very fast. I've always kind of had a sixth sense that has saved me a few times, but being spiritually sensitive means that I've always been able to kind of feel the presence of people and some living things if I focus on it. Sometimes I can close my eyes and guess where people are standing based on where I feel that they are. When I used to do this a lot, I actually got pretty good at it. But now and then I can feel things that were there. And that always scared me since I could tell what I was feeling was not a human or an animal. It just felt wrong. Whenever I was little, I used to have constant night terrors. I would sleepwalk around my house and just stand in hallways ominously. 
It got bad to the point my dad had to teach me how to not dream through meditation. Once I learned how to do that, I stopped having night terrors, but I also stopped dreaming. Ever since then, I very rarely ever had dreams, and when I do, I don't even remember them. My dad blames my bad dreams on the fact that we have strong spiritual side to our family and that they manifest in my dreams. On both sides, I come from strong blood, German warlocks, and Aztec blood. Last year, I got into sigils and glyphs and would just overall practice some minor occult things. I did not see anything and I wasn't contacted by any entities, but I felt that the more I continued to dabble in those arts, the more attention I was calling to myself. I felt like I was becoming more visible to those entities and now... I would feel some sort of presence. Anytime I felt a presence, it would terrify me. I felt as though sometimes something powerful was watching or was just around when I practiced my sigils. This would lead me to instantly stop what I was doing and burn what I drew, along with performing a right to release the energy from it without manifesting anything. I stopped doing it since I started to feel things start to persist. And I started having bad dreams again, along with the fact that I started to accidentally astral project when I took naps. And since I don't know what astral projecting was when it first happened to me, I thought I died. I was in the middle of class and I fell asleep and astral projected. I could see myself sleeping. I could see everyone around me, but I could not look around. I was just stuck floating above my body, staring directly at myself from above other than just feeling the presence of things and astral projecting on accident. That's all I've ever really experienced. It's Midnight Monster here. Our next story is about a World War II post-Nagasaki grandmother growing up. And guys, this one does get pretty wild. If you're enjoying the content so far, click subscribe to the channel as Midnight Monster drops daily stories of some of the most creepy, unexplained, and downright blood-curdling moments. If that sounds like something you're into, check out the channel because Story 4 is happening right now. My grandmother grew up in post-World War II Nagasaki. Her family saw the bomb drop from their house in the mountains outside the city. There was some mysticism stuff that was passed down in her family. Some of it was fortune-telling. By the time it made it to my grandmother's generation, they just started using a deck of 52, 54 with jokers playing cards. Before that, they used different types of cards or sticks that were like dice. Something like that. She also did some readings of palms and birthmarks that Asian babies have when they're first born. Anyways, she would always... Always, always, say that the mysticism stuff was fake and only for entertainment purpose, that it was all bullshit and that it was a mix of cold readings and random coincidences with the cards. She would only do readings if you agreed it was only for fun. What was weird was how accurate her readings were, despite her saying giving her disclaimer. My mom had an acquaintance that heard about this and asked to have a reading. My grandmother gave her a little speech and then starts with the card drawing. After a few minutes and looks up, suddenly says, So, I guess you want me to talk about your cheating husband and what you're going to do about it, and how it's going to affect your daughter. The lady nearly fell out of her chair in shock. My grandmother had only just met this lady and my mother never mentioned her before. My mom did not even know that this woman had a kid. The woman confirmed all that and was taken aback by it. My grandmother gave her whole speech once more, entertainment only, yada yada. Went on to tell her more details. The person the husband was cheating on her was someone the woman knew. The daughter would be fine. She predicted the sex of the next baby based on a birthmark of the older sibling on all my cousins. Asian babies have it right above their butt when they're born. It goes away when they get older. She was always, always correct for 20 plus guesses. It's much debate among some of the cousins if she predicted it. She claimed she could not remember every time she did it, but that too was for entertainment. The only time she did not get it exactly right was because she said she could not tell because the birthmark was too faded, but it looked like both boy and girl. The cousin had twins, a boy and a girl. 
She said that this did not count because it did not look like twins. Someone in my family calculated the odds of her being right so many times and it was high, even with the 50% of going either way. A few times, she has described things that happened in other people's dreams. I once visited her and she asked why I kept dreaming about my teeth falling out of my mouth and why I always had it reoccurring. I did not tell anyone about that. She just kind of smiled and told me not to worry about that and just take care of my teeth. She would read palms and tell people about their luck, wifeliness, and how many kids they would have. She was really sad and the lady asked why. Again, this is only entertainment. She saw that the lady would have five children but two miscarriages. She even saw the order that it happened in and the woman did have five kids with the miscarriages in the order my grandma saw. Some of the time, my grandmother would make predictions or say that she could not read the fortune or that it was too uncertain. But the time she had gotten it right had been very accurate. If you ask her how or why, she still just says it's for entertainment and it's just nonsense and random. She wanted to teach my mom and sister, but my mom is a hardcore Christian and does not want to learn. My grandmother only wants to teach the females in the family. I'm really sad to say this weird, usual, just for entertainment that she does will die with her. When I was a young kid, me and my friends were big into ghosts, the paranormal, the occult, or anything else creepy. I was self-identifying as a witch and we would often go ghost hunting in local places. We even came up with a theory that our school used to be an ancient, cursed burial ground. The thing we loved most was Ouija boards, which is where the story begins. One day, my friend comes up to me and tells me about an experience he had. He had made a makeshift Ouija board and used it on his school bus. He had contacted a ghost that called itself A, and it was trying to warn us about something. I and my other friend were curious and wanted to know more. I'd recently gotten an actual Ouija board for Christmas and I suggested that we should have a proper session at my house. So, we all come over one day and set the thing up. Salt circle, candles, and lavenders as a substitute for sage. We start the session and things go wrong immediately. The board is saying weird and cryptic things so we ask its name. The ghost goes by T. We ask what it is and it just says proxy. A quick Google search of the word made us realize that T was a proxy for something a lot darker. Us being kids, we thought it was the Ouija board demon whose name started with a Z, but now I'm a little unsure exactly what it was proxying for. Suddenly, we hear a loud noise coming from the closet. My friend went over to look and I stayed back to not take my fingers off the planchette and accidentally end the session without saying goodbye. They both screamed and ran out. They both claimed that they saw a long, black, shadowy thing with tiny white eyes curled up in the fetal position of the closet floor. We all freaked out and ended the session right there. I knew we had holy water in the other room, so we went to go get it. While we do, we hear another noise. We rush back and found the planchette, which we had taken off the board, was back on the board itself, and all the other items were scattered around the board. We blessed the board right then and there. We talked to our ghost a few more times, both T and A. We figured out that A comes in darkness and T comes in light. So if we wanted to talk to one or the other, we just turned the lights on and off. But here's the freaky part. T told my friends that we wanted to drain them of their essence and that he was connected to their families. A told us that he was also connected, but was there to protect them. We saw the black shadow figure a few more times, most often outside our windows, watching from the street. We thought it was T. We also saw a white figure with black eyes a few times, which we thought was A. I also could not go into the basement closet without getting a terrible sense of dread. Eventually, we get the house smudged and sightings stop completely. Now, I'm a proper Wiccan and have resolved to myself to never use a Ouija board again. They say that astral projection, out-of-body experiences, and leave your body an empty vessel for evil spirits or demons to more easily take refuge. I almost had sleep paralysis once. It happened last year in November. I was sleeping in my room and I could swear I felt footsteps towards my bed, 
it was 4 a.m. I tried rationalizing, thinking my brother sneaked into my room to scare me. I just bought my house in May 2019 and my brother rents a room, but have never felt scared or felt someone's presence there. So, I slightly opened my eyes to the side of my bed and nothing. Weird, okay. I go back to bed and I felt the footsteps again. When I say felt, it's not that I heard them, but I could feel the sound if that makes sense. I turned and laid on my back, slightly leaning towards the side of my bed. I opened my eyes, pretending to be asleep, but still did not see a thing. Then, I still feel like I should just sit up and inspect my room. Maybe my brother thought I was awake, so he dropped to the floor and hid on the side of the bed. Again, why would my brother be in my room at 4am to scare me? So, I try to open my eyes all the way, but I can't. I tried to rationalize further and told myself, I don't care this much. If he wants to scare me, let him. So, I was going to roll onto my side and have my back face him. But then I could not roll over. My muscles felt tight. People say that when they experience sleep paralysis, they feel pressure on their chest. And if someone was on them, associated with trouble breathing, I did not feel it. The pressure felt like it was on the side of my bed. It felt like footsteps. Again, I never actually heard footsteps. I felt them. I don't think I panicked or was stressed. I was paralyzed, but I wasn't stricken with fear. I was being too rational, and I thought to myself at the moment, am I in paralysis right now? How is that possible? I was consciously awake and moving this whole time. So I said enough. While still laying on my back, I took a giant large breath in, and in that breath, I felt relief. During that breath, I proceeded to imagine the space above my chest like a magnet, and my limbs were also magnets attracted to the middle, and I sat up straight. Knees to chest and arms were hugging myself. I did not feel fear, but a mild relief. Like, it was all just in my mind. I got up, took a piss, and went back to bed. Not going to lie, I did throw a quick shout out <laughs> in proper prayer to God or Jesus or whatever you believe in and just said, I know you're watching this house. I'm not a super religious person, but I do believe in a God. My parents are very religious and we prayed for the house when I moved in. As I said, I've never experienced anything paranormal in my house and to this day, I don't fear being in my house alone. It was just that weird one time moment. I've always had classic sleep paralysis, but this is some advanced sleep stuff. I was asleep in bed when I was awakened by the end of my comforter floating in the air and something or someone floating above it. I was clutching the top of my comforter with my hands trying to cover my face and trying to hide from whatever was there, but I could not pull it up. I'm positive my eyes were shut, but I could still see my entire room. Not my room in a dream, but my room as I left it when I went to bed. I was awake and able to see through my shut eyes. I kept trying to kick my comforter down with my feet but could not reach it, even though it was definitely within reach. And even though my comforter was blowing, I felt no wind. It felt like I could not look up high enough to see whatever being was haunting me, but I could see enough from my peripheral views that something was there. I kept trying to shake away the moment like waking yourself up from a dream, but it wasn't a dream and it felt different from normal sleep paralysis. I just stayed watching my comforter blow for a good minute or two before it stopped. When my comforter settled, the being left and my eyes were very clearly open. I was more convinced that it was just a vivid dream. Everyone looked just as it had, minus the floating comforter. I tugged the comforter over my head, and before I could relax, I felt, I mean I felt, something standing next to my bed with her hand on my comforter touching my arm, then moving to lift the comforter. I recognized it was not like the pressure of a sleep paralysis demon. It was legit something very real and physical there. Ask someone to touch your arm, take in the feel of their touch and how you can feel their presence next to you. It was like that. I immediately understood it was serious because I was not asleep. I was more certain now that before I was completely awake and I nearly screamed out loud when I jumped away and I felt it leave. I was in complete disbelief, like damn, 
That shit was right there. That was the most intense sleep paralysis type thing I've ever felt. And I've heard a voice once. I've had something wrap its arms around me while I was laying on my side, and the sun was out, but this shit? I'm looking over my shoulder typing this before it just felt like phantoms passing by. That thing felt like it came to see me. This was about 30 years ago. We were staying with my in-laws' parents out of the country on 11 wooded acres with spring-fed pond and swamps while waiting for our place to be ready to move into. My significant other worked the midnight shift and did not drive after dark, so I was taking him to and from work. Normally, I love going outside after dark, but that property always gave me the creeps and felt like I was being watched from the woods. One night, I accidentally locked myself out and was forced to sleep in the car. Sometime around 3 a.m., I woke up out of sound sleep. My heart was racing, hair standing on end like you might if you woke from a nightmare, but I hadn't had one. Then I heard noises like something was dragging on the dirt or gravel drive and some light tapping on the car. Of course, I'm already kind of freaked, but I figure it's an animal. I looked out the windows but could not see anything. The noises continued for about an hour. I tried turning on the headlights and the noise would stop. Still, could not see anything out there though. Turned the lights off and within a minute or so, noises again. Needless to say, I did not get much sleep and left early to pick up S.O. I got to where he worked, it's a restaurant, and just about ran inside to wait for him. Still pretty creeped out. Then, when his shift is over, we head to the car and find there are muddy handprints all over it. Some with duckweed stuck on them. On the front and rear fenders, one back door, and all over the trunk lid. My significant other turned white as a sheet and asked about them, so I told him my story. He then told me about how when they, he and his older siblings, were kids... They camped out one night when the house was being built and something came into their camp and left duckweed and mud-handed footprints all over. He suggested waiting until it was fully light out to go home. He had the next two days off so made some phone calls and found us somewhere else to stay for a few weeks. I've never been back there after dark. Years later, our daughter is about five years old and started crying whenever we talked about her staying overnight at grandma's and would refuse to go because of the monster in the swamp. After she and Grandma had camped out on the back deck one summer night, I still have no explanation for this, so may as well put it here. There was an incident that happened with my aunt in the summer of 2013. Some of my family decided to have a sleepover at my uncle's house on Christmas Eve. So, it was me, my family, my cousins, and their parents, and two more of my aunt staying over. We were all awake well past midnight and my mom called me to the room she was sharing with my two of my aunts. One was her sister and the other was her brother's wife. My uncle's wife had gone to sleep early and while I was talking with my mom and aunt, she suddenly sat bolts upright, eyes wide, staring at nothing. She did not respond to any of us asking if she was alright. After a few minutes, she finally looked around at the three of us in the room she had not blinked at all during that time, her eyes still wide awake. She started shouting things at us that no one could understand at the moment or even after that. Her body was also stock still, held the same way that it was when she first sat up. My mom sent me to our room to call my uncles, then told me to go to my room where my brothers and cousins were and wait there afterward. We could all hear my uncles praying over her, shouting even louder than she was, and she responded with a long, painful scream. It all eventually died out close to 20 minutes. Everyone that's there agrees she was possessed that night, and even though I'm not a religious person, I still can't find a reason to say otherwise. I rented a house a few years back and never believed in paranormal or any sort of spirits, etc. My first week in the house was finding a few creaks here and there, but nothing major. I very soon started to feel like I was being watched or just a presence in general. In the third week, I started waking up in the middle of the night with large scratches, almost cuts going to the length of my arm. From my wrist to my armpit, three scratches all parallel, always on my right arm. I did not think much of it, and one night, 
I hear a loud bang and go to the back and notice my back door open. Okay, no worries. I shut and lock the door with a deadbolt. The next morning, I wake up and the door's wide open. But the freaky part is the deadbolt's still in the locked position as well as the knob. It starts to freak me out now. I start telling a person I work with about the stuff. He told me his sister was a Native American shaman priestess, whatever it was, and she would come sage bless my house if I wanted. The next week, she came over with what I believed was called sweet grass and sage. She burned the sage while walking around and told me can fill a presence in this house. She hung the sweet grass over my head and my bed, and ever since, I have not had anything strange happen. Very weird. Midnight Monster here. That was 10 stories of witchcraft, voodoo, and the occult. If you enjoyed the channel, do subscribe because there's plenty of more content to come.